Uh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to jam 3 of android study jam so our topic for today is going to be recycler view so uh, what exactly is recycler view so anytime you have a list of data and you want to present them in a list form in your app you will be uh, using recycler view so recycler view basically makes it easy and uh, to efficiently display large sets of data in your Android app. Uh, so in order to basically use Android view, you just supply the data and define how the item would be look, would be looking, and the recycle view library internally dynamically creates the elements whenever they are needed. Now, one thing to note here is that uh, why is it actually called recycle view? So as a name implies, recycle view internally recycles the individual elements which means that whenever an item uh, is crawls off the screen, that means that it is no longer visible to the person. Recycle view uh, does not destroy uh, its view in memory. In instead, it just basically uses that view and modifies its property in order to create newer views which have scrolled on screen. Uh, this uh, concept of reusing vastly improves performance and ends up in improving your app's responsiveness and reducing the overall power consumption. So. Uh, this is actually what we'll be building today. So I'll give you a live demo as to what we'll be building. So I'll connect my device right here and start off screen sharing. So uh, as you can see, this is what uh, we'll be building today in our, in our today's jam right here. So this is basically a sample list which has three individual views and uh, the overall the list has about 100 elements in it. So before doing that, let's actually uh, get uh, through with some concepts which uh, we'll be needing while building our very own recycler view. So the first and foremost thing which uh, we'll be creating is the item layout and it's a accompanying view holder. So the item layout is actually going to be the resource layout of the actual item, which is going to be displayed in the list. Whereas uh, the view holder is going to be a class for our item layout, which will contain the metadata about the place and everything within the recycle view. Now, accompanying the uh, item layout and the view holder itself would be a model data class. So this model data class is going to hold the actual properties which uh, we'll be showing on screen inside the list. Now, the next and the most important thing uh, while building a recycler while building a recycler view is the adapter class. So this is actually the brains behind the recycler view and it handles all the logic related to the display of items and the uh, basically like anything related to binding or the data and how the items are going to be displayed and everything. So that is handled by the adapter class. Now, the last thing which uh, we'll be also be covering is going to the layout manager. So the layout ma manager is a special class uh, which uh, defines how the items will be positioned in on screen uh, in the recycler view. So as you can see right here, it's, it's written uh, layout manager is responsible for measuring and positioning the item views within a recycler view. So uh, let's actually start off by creating a new project in Android Studio. So I'll close off first of all just close off my screen sharing and i'll hit create new project and uh, i'll choose empty activity since that's the one we need here in our case now i'll give my app any name like a sample recycler view and you can uh, give your uh, give anything you wanted to now the language will be choosing kotlin and minimum SDK should be whatever works for you according to your device so i'll hit finish and uh, now we'll wait for android studio to actually load our project and uh, open up our files in the editor section so this should yeah so now We'll, it will probably take like a half a minute to just load up everything. And yeah, so now that's done. So in order to actually uh, add recycler view in our uh, like Android app, uh, the first thing which we'll have to do is add the dependency for it. So for that, what I'll do is open the app level build.gradle file from the Gradle script section. Uh, double click on it in order to open it. Scroll down to the dependency section, then 
uh, this is actually the Jetpack library page for Recycleview. I'll have this linked in the description and in the FAQ doc as well. So I'll just copy over the line, which is going to be implementation, Android X Recycleview and everything. And uh, copy it over and paste it in my dependencies section of my build or creator file. So uh, once that's done, I'll also enable the view binding uh, along with this. So for, in order to enable view binding, I'll edit the Android section in my build.gradle file. So I'll write uh, build features, then create a code block, and in it, I'll write view binding and set it as true. So now I'll just hit sync now, and it should be done. In, yeah, so now that is done. I'll also apply the suggested changes for Gradle because that's actually improved a lot of things internally while working. And that is actually, yeah, I'll just hit sync now again. And uh, that's that. So now uh, in our project, view binding is enabled where and also uh, recycler view has been added as well. So uh, let's actually hover over to our activity underscore main or example, which is the layout file for the default main activity class uh, activity. So by default, you will be getting this uh, hello world text right here. So I'll just go ahead and delete it. Then the next thing what I'll do is drag over the recycler view view from our palette section and place it anywhere on the layout uh, because what we want is to make a recycler to take uh, the all the available space on the screen so for that we'll have it set up uh, as a match variant so that uh, whatever the whatever the uh, size of our it will be according to that and uh, yeah so i'll give it a some form of id i'll write recycler underscore view and then i'll set up all the constraints from all of its sides by clicking on the create new constraint boxes and yeah so now i've just added a recycler view in my android app and constrained it in order to, accordingly in order to like maximize the uh, screen real estate right here so the uh, let's start off by first of all creating the very layout which we are going to display in our uh, list recycle review. So as you can see right here, so this is actually uh, uh, the list and the layout which uh, we are going to build. So uh, let's actually break down this layout right here. So as you can see, there is a small image view uh, and next to that are two text views. So our image view is going to display some form of icon or anything which uh, whatever we want. And similarly, the text views are going to display like whatever form of lines we wanted to show. And all of our three views are going to be uh, placed inside a constraint cloud, which is going to act as our root layout for this item. So uh, uh, in order to create my item layout, what I'll do is click on the res folder, then choose uh, the layout folder and uh, right click on it so i'll right click and go to new layout resource file i'll provide it some form of name i'll just write like an item underscore sample and let the root element be constant layout then click on ok and that will create a blank constant layout in order to create our item view so uh, before we actually like add all our images and the like the text or anything let's actually where is it? Let's actually add these icons which uh, you can see right, which you see right here in the preview. So in order to add like any form of icons uh, in our project, uh, what you'll need to do is click or right click on the drawable folder, then go to new and uh, hit a vector asset right here. So right here, as you can see, this uh, clip art section, you, you can just double click on it. And this will basically load up a list of different icons which Google officially provides for everyone to use in their projects. So like, let's say I want to have this clock icon right here. I'll just select that and hit OK. Make the name something which is more readable. So I'll just make it something like IC underscore clock. Hit next and finish. Similarly, I'll add like two to three more icons. So just for some variability in our project, then like I can choose the ADV icon right here. I'll hit OK. 
IC underscore ADB. Then that is that has been added. Similarly, I can add like uh, another icon. So can be basically anything like this camera I can write here. I'll name something like IC underscore camera. And yeah, so just like that, we just added about three icons in our Android Studio project. So I'll close those. And now let's actually start off building our actual layout itself. So as you can see right here, we have one image view and two text views. So I'll add those similar, uh, similarly. I'll drag and drop an image view. Now uh, in this section, you can just choose any eye or any icon or any image you want because uh, this is actually going to be replaced at runtime when our list is being generated uh, to in order to be displayed on screen. So this icon right is not much of a deal uh, for us as of right now. Now similarly, I'll drag in two text views right here. So let's actually start constraining our layouts in order to form the structure of it. So I move it to the top left corner and as you can see it automatically constrained it to about 16 dp worth of padding i'll make it about 24 uh, just uh, for the, this uh, tutorial then um, i'll increase the size of it actually let's make it about something like uh, 36 dp by 36 dp yeah and uh, so for our two lines of worth of text view, let's what I'll do is first of all constrain the the text view to be on the right side of my image. So I just drag and drop this pointer to this, and now they are like connected with about zero space, a zero worth of padding right there. So I'll change the zero margin to something like 24. Yeah, that seems nice. And similarly, I'll drag and drop this connector right here to the top of the image view in order to basically like a uh, link up the position of our image and the first line right here. So uh, the next thing uh, what I'll do is uh, place this at the bottom of our first line. So I'll drag this connector and connect it with the bottom of our first text view and select uh, this connector on the left side to the right hand side of the, our image view. Similarly, I'll just change the left padding to be about, uh, about 24 in order to equalize and the top one to be about uh, maybe eight. Yeah, so that seems nice. So the next thing is to actually uh, what we need to do is make sure that our root layout, which is constant layout in our case, what we need to do is make sure that the layout underscore height parameter is set to wrap content or else uh, whenever we are going to like uh, generate our list it will basically have items which are uh, worth uh, like which are taking up a whole of a screen real estate so i'll what i'll do is like add some more padding right here so like i'll set the bottom one to be about 24 as well so it looks more symmetrical yeah so now that a basic layout is completed i'll provide the ids to it like i'll just write image underscore view I just did that, then change it to something like a, a text view one. And similarly for the bottom one, I just change it to something like text view two. Yeah. So now, now uh, our like our resource for our layout is almost like completed. We don't need to like make any more changes to it. So uh, the next thing what we need to do is actually create a data class for which will hold our properties. So right here, as you can see, we have an image view and two text views. So for the text part, uh, we are going to have like two strings. Whereas for the image part, what we'll do is uh, make uh, add an integer property. So internally in Android, all of your drivers and all of your layouts uh, have a specific ID to it, which uh, is of the type integer. So uh, similarly for that, what I'll do is just hit a new, uh, like right click on my package name right here, then choose new Kotlin class as file and uh, give it some sort of name. So I'll just call it sample an item. Sample item, yeah. So now I convert this to a data class. So for that, I'll remove the two brackets and use the keyword data before the actual class uh, keyword. So uh, now I'll pass, uh, like write my actual parameters. So they are going to be uh, 
the first one is going to be our image id so that will be val let's say image the type is going to be int then my line one the type is going to be string similarly my line two and the type is going to be string yeah so just like that we basically created a data class for our item which holds our image uh, integer property our string line one property our string line two property so now that our idata item has been is done let's start off uh, building the actual adapter class which is like the super like the most important class in order to make the recycle review function so similarly i'll just right click and tell select new cotton class slash file then write sample adapter as its name you can name it anything you want but i'll just go ahead and name it like sample adapter uh yeah so now in order to like uh, make a sample uh, make our class sample adapter function as an actual recycler adapter we'll have to make it extend the recycler view dot adapter class so now as you can see i wrote recycler view and android should detect it that uh, we are trying to import and use an externally added dependency so i'll just place my cursor over this and hit alt and enter so that will just add the uh, required import statements for it so similarly after adapter i just place my brackets that means so now this way what i just did is basically made my sample adapter class extend the existing recycler view dot adapter class so now adapter this uh, statement will actually give an error saying that one type argument is expected for the class adapter which means that uh, we need to pro, uh, specify the view holder type for the adapter right here. So in order to create the view holder class, let's create a next it class inside the sample adapter class. So I'll write class sample view holder. And this class is also going to extend recycler view dot view holder. Yeah. And just like that. Now, uh, as I uh, told right here that the view holder is uh, describes an item view and holds the meta metadata about this place and everything uh, in the recycler view. So, uh, in order to like add all, so right here, what we need to do is basically like add all the properties which uh, we are going to access for our resource left right here. So, by default, a uh, sample view holder will be accepting uh, an item view. So of the type view so this is going to be the item which a recycler view, view will provide us in order to like uh, use and modify and make changes in order to like properly display and items and everything so, and this item will also get internally passed to the recycler view internal view holder so uh, right here inside our sample view holder what we need to start doing is uh, binding all our uh, actual views and everything so the first thing which I do is create the binding variable for my item view right here. So I'll write private because I'll use private because we don't actually have to access the binding variable from anywhere else. So I'll just write private val binding and then the type will be it so as you can see right the actual uh, layout name is item underscore sample, which means that our binding class is going to be called something like item sample binding. Yeah, as you can see right here which is going to be equal to item sample binding dot bind item view yeah so just like that we just uh, made a binding variable which is going to access our resource layout itself so now let's define our three views which we added so the first one will be my image uh, which is going to be of the type image view which is going to be equal to binding dot uh, image view uh, just like that. Similarly, for my two text views, I'll write val. Well, uh, let's uh, name it line one, which is going to be text uh, text view, which is going to be equal to binding dot text view one, and my line two, which is going to be of type text view, and will be equal to binding dot text. Uh, text view two, yeah. 
so now uh, that uh, sample view hold is completed, let's actually apply that type to uh, recycler view dot adapter extension. So right here, I will just uh, make a pair of brackets and I'll write uh, sample view holder. So just like that, my uh, like the extension of my recycler view dot adapter class is completed. So now this part is going to be highlighted. Now this basically tells us that there are about functions which we need to override in order to make our sample adapter function. So I'll just place my cursor over the red uh, underlined part and press Alt and enter. Now it will give us an option saying it needs to implement members. So I'll click on that and select all of the functions which I need to implement and press on OK. So this gave us three overridden functions uh, in order to make our actual have sample adapter function. So let's start off by the get item count. So this a uh, get item count part actually uh, uh, has we so here we have to return an integer. Now that integer will provide the size of the list of our recycling view. So right here it means that. Let's say if I just return, uh, I'll just return the value of two. So that means that uh, only about two items will be drawn on screen. That means like one recycle view will only be act, uh, able to access about two views right here. So in order to like properly like uh, return the list size and everything, what I'll do is make uh, the sample adapter accept my data list. So for that, I'll write private val list and uh, i'll set the type to be as an array list of which uh, where each item is going to be of the type sample item so sample item as you can recall is the data class which we just made so error list sample item yeah uh, so similarly uh, right here what i just do is return list dot size so now whenever we create our recycler view using our sample adapter, the get item count will return the actual list size, which means that accurately all of our items will be displayed in on screen. So now the next thing uh, right here, which we'll check out is going to be our on create view holder method. So inside our on create view holder, what we need to do is uh, create a sample view holder create a, basically an instance of the sample view holder while inflating the actual resource layout itself. So what basically I mean is that what we'll do is inflate this layout right here. So, and then convert it uh, to a sample view holder class and return it right here. So as you can see, the uh, return type for the on create view holder function is sample view holder. So in order to uh, use it, what I'll do is write return sample view holder and inside this i need to pass a view so in order to inflate a view i'll write layout inflator which is the class we use to inflate our layouts from the resource xmls then write dot from and pass on a context now the context can is accessible from our parent view group so for that i'll just write parent dot context now that way we have a functioning layout inflator now after that i'll write dot inflate and the first argument i'll provide is uh, going to be my actual layout itself so that will be r dot layout dot uh, item underscore sample then the next thing is uh, going to uh, the next thing what we need to do is provide a root layout for it so for the root we can just make uh, provide the root as the parent which is going to be a view group so I'll write parent. Now the last thing it asks is uh, if we uh, do we want to attach the actual layout to the root itself. Now, but we don't. So what I'll do is provide false right here. So now our on create view hold function is also completed. So just to recap, what we did is basically inflate our layout from the resource XML, then our, uh, like uh, pass that view to a sample view holder in order to bind all the existing views and just return a dot object uh, through our on create view holder function. Now, uh, let's go over to our last remaining function, the on bind view holder. So this is act the actual function where uh, we'll be uh, provided an instance of the item sample view holder. And here, what we'll have to do is basically attach all the our data to the item itself. So you, as you can see, we are also provided the position of the item in the recycle itself. So what I'll do is create an instance of an item from our list, which will give us the particular data for a specific position. Uh, 
so i'll write val item and make it equal to list and i'll access the item at the index position yeah so uh, the next thing what i'll do in order to apply and at attach my values is going to be holder now as you can see holder is of type sample view holder which means the three variables are the three views which is the image the line one and the line two is accessible to us so i'll just write holder dot image and let's set up the set the image for the resource id we provided so i'll write holder dot image dot set image resource and in the rest id i'll write item dot image so if uh, so item is as you can see is an instance of a sample item data class which has the property of image the image id and uh, we are just setting our uh, actual like layout image at a runtime to be uh, equivalent to the actual id we are providing for it similarly what i'll do is just write holder dot line one dot text uh, which is going to be equal to item dot line one that means i'm just setting the first text view uh, value as the line one which you provide for it and holder dot line two dot text which is going to be equal to item dot line two yeah so now just like that our adapter is complete so this is the minimal code which uh, you are required in order to create a functioning adapter so let's actually go over back to our main activity.kt file and start off by and start off actually making use of our adapter and data class and everything so i uh, first of all create my binding variable so for that i just write private late in it var binding now its type is going to be as you can see the name of the actual resource is activity underscore main so our binding class is going to be something like activity main binding as you can see right here and uh, since a uh, binding variable is initialized at runtime at some later form uh, point in execution the we initialize it using the latent keyword which basically uh, tells the compiler that the binding variable will be initialized at a later point in execution of the program so uh, right here i'll just initialize it by writing binding is going to be equal to activity main binding dot inflate and pass on my layout inflator from the activity now i change the r dot layout dot activity main part to something like binding dot root so that way are the views which exist in our activity are going to be uh, accessible only through the binding variable right here so uh, let's actually start uh, creating some form of random data in order to display in our uh, recycler view list so i start off by creating an empty error list now i'll in order to do it i'll just write val data you can name name your very variable anything you want so i'll just write val data equal to array list of now since uh, initially we are creating an empty list we need to uh, tell the compiler itself that what uh, type of items we are going to have so for that i'll write sample item so now uh, just like that what we just did is basically create an empty array list uh, which will be containing items of the type sample item class yeah so now uh, we can similarly just like uh, that we can also add items to the data uh, list itself so for that what i'll do is write data dot add and i'll create an instance of my sample item class so for that i'll write sample item now for the image part uh, let's open the project pane right here so now as you can see the my image let's say we want to provide uh, use the ic underscore adb dot xml image uh, drawable right here so for that what i'll do is write r dot drawable dot ic underscore adb now this is actually internally registers as an integer because each of the resources you use uh, in your app has uh, an integer id which goes with it so this is how we basically use it while developing our android app now i'll provide line one so i'll write something like line one just for now and my line two is going to be something like uh, line two yeah so just like that we just basically added a single item to our data uh, list right here now i want this to repeat like i want to add about let's say maybe 100 items so 
just to do that, I add those 100 items. I'll just wrap my data dot, dot add line with uh, the repeat loop. So for that, I'll just write repeat 100 at my code block opening right here. And just like that, now my addition part will be executed about 100 times it, itself. So now at this point, our data is ready. We have some form of random, like not exactly random, but some form of data which we can display uh, through our recycler view. So the next thing what do you need to do is make uh, as actually define a layout manager for the recycler view. So as you can see right here, the layout manager actually uh, defines as to how the items will be positioned on screen. So right here, if you can see on the preview, the items are placed like one below the other uh, another. And if you actually have like uh, tried some Android development themselves, you will be knowing that this is what we call a linear layout. Uh, that means basically the items are placed one after the another in a line itself. So what we'll do is a make use of the linear layout manager. So I'll write val uh, manager. I'll just use manager word for my variable name and make it equal to linear layout manager and make it and I'll pass on the context using the this keyword. Yeah. So now I have my layout manager ready. So let's also define the adapter which we'll be using. So I'll write val adapter, which is going to be my sample adapter. And I'll pass on the data error list, which I, I just created. Yeah. So now my layout manager is ready. My adapter is ready. The only final thing which remains to do is actually attach these two uh, classes to the actual recycler view itself. Now we can do that just by using the binding variable we created. So I'll just write binding dot uh, recycler view in order to access my recycler view. Then write dot layout manager and make it equal to manager. So that way we just uh, applied our linear layout manager to our recycler view. And in order to apply our adapter, I'll just write binding dot recycler view dot adapter, which is going to be adapter itself since that's the name for my variable right here. So now let's actually go ahead and compile the app itself. I'll hit run and I'll start screen sharing also. So you can see, yeah. It probably take like a couple of minutes in order to compile and run it on the device. So we'll just wait for that. And hopefully it will be working fine for us. So as you can see, no errors in our project as it's going great. And yeah, so now as you can see, we just created a sample uh, list and uh, displayed it through our recycler view. So now I can just scroll through it. And as you can see, it basically has like 100 items in it, which is going, which is being displayed right here uh, linearly. So let's actually uh, like make things kick it up, kick up a notch and let's go ahead and add some form of randomness in our data. So just like this, as you can see right here, I have different sort of items for each of my item right here. And even the lines are different. And the second line is having an integer value right here. So in order to achieve that, what I'll do is first of all, uh, create an array list of all my existing icons right here. So as I previously added like about three icons in my project. What I'll do is uh, just write val uh, in the variable icons and make it equal to array list of. Now right here, I do not need to explicitly provide a data type because I'm going to like add the items uh, here itself. So I write r dot drawable dot ic underscore adb. Similarly, I will write r dot drawable dot ic underscore camera and r dot drawable dot ic underscore clock. I'll just format my code so it is actually like more usable. And uh, yeah. So now my icon error list is done. Now the next thing what I'll do is make an error list for the first line which I want to show. So let's say I have uh, lines equal to error list of. Similarly, I won't provide any like explicitly the data type of it since I'm going to add my data right here. So I'll write something like sample, then maybe 
hello then maybe i guess word or i can even write study jam it can be anything now for the second part for our integer value writer what i'll do is basically create a range of values in order to create a range range i'll write let's say val um num i'll just name it num and make it equal to our range so i'll i want my range to start from let's say one then i'll put two dots and let's say i want it to end at about 50. so that way my num variable actually has a range of uh, integers which starts from one and ends at 50. so the next thing what i'll do is in order to add the randomness is modify these values right here so i'll replace r dot drawable dot ic underscore adb with something like icons which uh, is icons dot random so now what this will do is basically whenever we will have to add a sample item to our data list it will uh, make use of the icons list right here and pick a random value from it so this is how we basically introduce randomness in our data similarly for line one and line two i'll just write lines dot uh, random and for my line two part which is going to be the number i'll write num dot random now since this is going to give us an integer value or we just type cast it to string by writing dot to string and just like that i'll go ahead and start the run and i'll screen share us as well it's probably open up yeah so now as you can see we have items where the icon is of the adp then we have a camera icon and we also have the clock icon and the actual lines are different as also like for here we have study jam we have, we have hello the numbers are different and everything so uh, this is like a brief overview as to how you can add uh, may and make use of recycle view in your android app so one thing like the which is also useful is like changing the actual data at runtime so i'll stop my screen share and so for that uh, let's actually add a button right here so i'll remove this constraint and uh, what i'll do is basically add a single button at the bottom of my layout here i'll place it at the center of my screen and constrain the bottom padding to be something like 16 dp then i'll again make the recycler we basically go like uh, occupy this space extruding the bottom part which is uh, occupied by the button itself then i provide some form of id to my button like let's say i want it to be button underscore uh, um, let's give it anything add so i'll use this button to basically add items at runtime now what I'll do is change the text of it right here by writing add and go back to my main activity class. So at the end of my on create uh, uh, on create function, what I'll write is basically binding dot uh, button add and set an on click listener to my button by writing the set on click listener. And right here, what I'll do is add an item at runtime. So I'll write data dot uh, add. And I want it to be added at the top of my list. So I'll provide the index as zero and I'll create the instance of my sample item class right here. So let's say I want it to be a static item and I just want the icon to be something like, uh, let's say IC underscore ADB. Then the line one should be uh, added at runtime. And my second line is going to be something like um, study jam, let's say. Let's make it that. I'll format my code so it's actually more visible to you. And uh, yeah. Uh, so now what, hap what will happen is basically as soon as I uh, click my hit, I hit play, uh, sorry. As soon as I click my button, what I'll do is basically add an item at the topmost position in my data array list. Now, uh, uh, after adding the data, what we need to do is basically uh, notify the actual adapter that we have modified our data itself. So since we are uh, inserting an item, what we need to do is write adapter dot notify item inserted. Now we'll also have to provide the actual position where the item is inserted 
in order to just uh, tell that uh, there is going to be a change in the item at that specific position. So just like that, what I'll do is click uh, run again. And uh, let's see. So now uh, this is my actual list. As you can see right here, I, I can scroll to the top and the top item says hello with the number seven. So I'll click add now. And now when I scroll to the top, uh, it's uh, uh, it just added my custom item, which is saying added at runtime uh, with the second line as a study jam. Similarly, I can just click this multiple times and um, accordingly, the items will be added as well. Now, one thing if you will notice is that uh, whenever I press the add button, I'm not actually being able to see the first item itself. Uh, so in order to do that, what we need to do is basically make a recycler view go to the topmost position. So for that, what you can just uh, do is, I place this right here. And what, so what you can do is write binding dot recycler view dot scroll to position. So this way we are explicitly making our recycler view go to the top of our list. And uh, I'll press add. And now, as you can see, it automatically scrolls to the top and displays the animation, which is like this fade in animation while adding the item itself. Yeah. So this is how we basically add items at runtime. Similarly, you can also like uh, remove items at runtime. So let's say I'll just modify the text here, which so it should say delete. And I'll go back to my main activity class. And right here, what I'll do is comment of this part, then write data dot remove at. That means I'll just remove the data at the topmost position of the list, and then do adapter dot notify item removed. Since in this case I'm actually removing the item itself. Now just like that, I'll hit run again. And now when I press delete, as you can see, the topmost item is getting deleted and there is like a nice animation which goes with it, telling that the item is being removed. Yeah, so yeah, I can just hit uh, keep clicking on it and the items will get removed themselves. So this is how we basically modify the data at runtime itself. Now there is one more thing in the notify part. So let's say like, I'll just comment this as whole. Let's say my whole list uh, gets modified. Let's say at this point when I'm clicking my button, my data becomes like something like error list of and uh, sample. Wait, uh, what I'll do is like clear my error list. So that way uh, I'll have zero items. Then I'll explicitly add a single item in order to show. I'll add it by writing data dot add. Sample item ID can be anything. Unless I want the camera icon, single item, and uh, a second line. Yeah, just like that. And uh, I'll format it so you can see better. Um, yeah, so now. Uh, now that we have actually like modified the data hold array list itself, what we need to do is write adapter dot notify data set change. So this basically tells the adapter that uh, all of the items have been modified and you'll have to like redraw each item individually. So now when I hit click on delete, as you can see, all of my items were cleared from my data list and only a single item exists, which is this particular item we added. Now, this was all about like changing and modifying the data at runtime. Uh, the last thing which I'll be talking about is the going to the uh, layout manager. So right here, as you can see, I use the linear layout manager, which uh, places my items. I mean, I'll just uh, show the item list. Yeah. So as you can see, it places the items one below the another, like normally. So let's say we wanted to have a list with a uh, different number of columns. So let's say I want to make a list which has two columns. So for that, what I'll do is change my linear layout manager to something which is called grid layout manager. And similarly, I'll the first of all, I'll pass in my context using the this keyword and my second 
argument is going to be the number of columns I want. So let's say I want about two columns. So I'll just uh, like specify two, then hit on run. And now, as you can see, my list has about two columns in it. So I can change, go ahead and change this to something like three. And the next time I'll run my app, it is going to have three columns itself. Yeah, so that is how uh, the actual layout manager affects the list and how the position of the item themselves. So that was all for my side regarding uh, uh, to site review. So let's see if we actually have any questions. Next steps after these tracks. So uh, once you are done with the prior program tracks and the beginner tracks themselves, uh, you will be having uh, like a solid understanding of the basics of Android app development. Now it's totally your call if you want to like delve deeper into developing Android apps themselves. Like you have resources like developer.android.com. You have YouTube, uh, which where Google actually posts like uh, uh, very helpful uh, tutorials regarding Android app developments. So the next big thing, if you want to like start developing Android apps, would be to basically like think of ideas uh, which can be converted into a functional app and start working on them. It can be anything. It can be as simple as a simple calculator app, or it can be something which you have been always been thinking or dreaming about. It totally depends on you as to what direction you want to start with. But the main factor is that uh, you'll have to basically think of an idea and implement it in a functional Android app itself. Yeah, so I guess uh, we'll end our session for today now.